And have one of your best scorers be your sixth man. That gives a big boost for you offensively when you can have a spark come off the bench. And Taylor Brown's having a monster game for Brad. Great goal of the press. Witter a three in the corner here. Gaze is led by as many as 15. Antoine Young. You know what I like is the fact that he had a huge game. He probably had everybody patting him on the back, walking around on campus, and he could have easily came out today and been ultra aggressive, but he has let the game come to him, and he's starting to assert himself now, just making Simple plays, doing a good job offensively. Justin Carter calling that foul. We're at the seven minute mark. Blue Jays holding on to an eight point lead. Roberts goes to the foul line. His first trip to the charity stripe tonight. We talked about Andrew Warren hitting a long shot from half court to end the first half. And Chris Roberts is a guy that's no stranger to hitting long shots. He hit a 75 foot shot at the buzzer to beat Oakland in the second round of the 2009 College Insider.com postseason tournament last year. So that must be something they work on at practice. In Bradley's, all they're doing right now is trying to just eat some clock, slow the game down. Because depth is going to become an issue in the final stages of this game. Shot clock for the Blue Jays. And use a bucket for separation. Five of the shot clock. There's Antoine Young with it. Then Josh Jones gets it off. Off the front of the rim. It's going to go back to Egal, who's going to be called for over the back. And he's hurt. Take another look at it. Pretty good battle. Ooh, that hurt. Little whiplash hit the back of the head. You can see there he got his feet tangled up on Runnels as he was going down, and his arm was also tangled up with him, so he couldn't have it. Go that 10-win conference streak was in jeopardy. They can get that today. Also pick up the 16th win of the season, which would mean 20 wins not out of the question, especially oh. if they could win one, maybe two wins in St. Louis, and then a postseason tournament, say the CBI. Yeah, a lot at stake today, and then we talked about the open the ramifications of this game moving on into next week, and that's something you do have to think about. Taylor Brown now with 21. Woo. What can Brown do for you to score you a lot of points off the bench? And Alden wants a timeout. He'll take a 30. This will allow after you have not one but two victories over. It's really tough. I, I hate having to play teams two times in a row. It's something we had to do my senior year. We beat Bradley in senior day and then had to turn around and face them right away. You're so familiar with them that it makes things very difficult. It's usually the games become ugly and grinded out in that third matchup. But you'd much rather have that than probably have to face Wichita State or Illinois State. Kenny Lawson goes a five in the rebound. And then he finished Kenny with 16 points. And the crowd coming alive. Brown for three. Why not? He can't miss anywhere else. 25 points. A quarter for Cavell Brenner. Answers with one, two, three of his own. Nobody's cheering more right now than Cavell Witter's mother. Sims Edwards. And it's exchanging baskets back and forth. Galore inside the quest. 
Wilson. In and out, Lawson pulls down the rebound. They call a foul on Brown. Again, Eastman, Maniscalco, Sims Edwards, and Andrew Warren. is going to be shooting a lot of free throws from here on out. It's a feeling. It's such a good feeling as I'm sure Coach Alton feels right now knowing that you just got to get the ball to Antoine Young and he's going to be able to break the pressure, kind of that one-man press break, and then handle the ball around the half-court area and then go make good decisions and attack the basket. But the big thing is, can he make the throws? And he gets the roll on that one. For more Blue Jay talk after the game, make sure to listen to the Blue Jay Cohen wrap-up show on Big Sports 590. I'll be hosting that. We'll take your phone calls. We'll talk about the Blue Jays game today as well as Blue Jays getting ready head to head into uh, March or Arch Madness in St. Louis. It's on Big Sports 590 right after the game. Now with these five guards, it's going to make Kenny Lawson very important. They'll go zone on this base and out of bounds here. Everybody's a threat on the floor, though, to score. Mascalco. Look at Kenny Lawson. That was a great block shot. The eraser. And a little bit of emotion, a scream to the student section as he sent that thing right to the student section. Looks even better in fast motion. <laughs> there it is again. Lost it back to back blocks. What a defensive stand from the junior who's just had a great season. A little weave action just to buy some time. Now the Bellevue West Thunderbird, now Creighton Blue Jay. Sophomore point guard is going to go to work. Five on the shot clock. There's Carter. <laughs> Guys flying all over the place. Jay's still with a 10 point lead. team has scored a field goal since the 427 mark. And Brown ends that drought. He now has 28 points. He'll go to the line to try to get his 29. And I talked about it earlier, the discipline to stay down. Watch as Taylor Brown's going to give a little fake. Carter's going to bite on it. And one. Something the staff is, coaching staff is really hard for these guys is the discipline to not bite on shot fakes. Brown actually missed. It's a big miss too because now they couldn't set their full court yeah. pressure. 